Hello students, today I am going to teach you a very important topic, balance of payment and foreign exchange. This chapter carries six marks in your board exams. Every year, CBSC asks most of the time direct question from this unit. So, let's start. Topic is balance of payment. As the name suggests, uh, it's a balance of different type of payments made for the purpose of transactions or by a country. Transactions can be of various types, maybe of goods, services, unilateral transfer, that is single-sided transfers, or maybe some capital transfers, maybe of assets or uh, some financial assets. So let's start. Balance of payment is a systematic record of all the monetary transactions made between residents of a country and rest of the world during given period of time and this given period of time is mainly of one year so it is a systematic record it's for the fixed period of time that is for one financial year and it is a double entry book that means we have payments also and receipts also and most of the time it's in balance this statement includes all the transactions made by or two individuals, corporates, that means firms, industries, and the government. It helps in monitoring the flow of funds to develop the economy. Iska purpose kya hai? Let's discuss also this. Because uh, before going in detail, we should know that why it is important for a country. Right, and that is why it is added in your syllabus also. The purpose of calculation of balance of payment. The basic purpose of BOP accounting is to know the strength and weakness of the economy in international relations. That means when the country trade with the rest of the world, that what type, what is its strength, that in which area it is strengthening. It means it is a, a dominating the other countries maybe in the terms of goods in terms of services right and what are its weakness at what a demand from rest of the world it is analyzed only by the bop by analyzing the bop accounts of the last year one can come to the know the overall gain and loss right so as we do in our daily life also that uh, uh, when we go, uh, any businessman, it was all gains and all losses. It came to know that what type of progress they have made in a particular year. It can be ascertained that whether composition and direction of international trade and capital movement have improved or caused deterioration in the economic conditions of the country. And this is BOP which tells us that international trade and capital movement se, between the countries which uh, have economic condition has improved or has worse than before. Improve kab hogi? You know that when we export and we earn foreign exchange and when it destroyed, when it destroyed, when we import more and we lose for an exchange and when we, there is depreciation of our domestic currency. Next is very important components of BOP. We have two mainly components of BOP current account and the capital account. As you can see in the slide we have current account and capital account. Let us do them in detail. 
First is the current account. Current account is re records the transactions of the goods, services, and transfers during a financial year. So it means it takes three types of transactions. One, visible goods. Number two, invisible goods. That is like services. And third is capital transfers. That means uh, the transfers of funds or assets. That is compensation of factors of production. Right? And one more is there that is unilateral transfer that is single sided transfer. Let us take one by one. It records visible trade transactions related to export and import of goods or merchandise includes physical goods exported and imported. So the first item is visible goods exported or imported. Second number is invisible goods. Items that are not tangible. For example, the services like shipping, banking, insurance, etc. are the part of invisible items. So services include the SIP from the sale of services to foreign countries and payment for the purchase of services from a foreign country. Incomes include investment, income and compensation of employees in forms of wages, salaries. Unilateral transfers are the single-sided payments that president of a country gets free of cost without any payment in return. For example, like gifts from other countries, donations, indemnity payments, and vice versa. So the import and exports of visible item, that is the first item which we have discussed, is often known as balance of trade. So balance of trade only includes the goods, the physical goods, right? So balance of trade equals to export of goods minus import of goods. So we again, I'm saying there are three items, visible items, invisible items, and unilateral transfers. Let us go to the next one. Next is the capital account. As I've told you, there are two accounts, current account and the capital account. We have discussed the current account. Now comes the capital account. It records international economic transactions which are related to change in assets, including physical and financial assets. So what type of assets are included? Whether physical assets, or financial assets, physical assets like machines, right? And technology, new machines of technology and financial assets. For example, a person who is in abroad and invested in our country in share markets, that is financial investment, right? It records short-term and long-term capital transactions. Items in the capital account include, number one, foreign investment, that is a direct investment which is made in our country, right? And next is the portfolio investment from abroad. Now, this foreign direct investment means the person who is investing in our country has total control over the assets and has the managerial powers. That means he will control that uh, firm or industry. While in the portfolio investment, what is going to happen? The only, they only invest in the shares of that firm or that industry. So they don't have manage, managerial parts. Next is loan, borrowing from the private individuals, non-financial institutions, government, etc. It includes external assistance, right? 
and commercial borrowings. So what is external assistance is there? External assistance means External assistance means when the firms or the government or the private sector borrow from rest of the world on the concessional rates, while the commercial borrowing means when the government or the private sector borrow from the international market. So the difference are is clear. Commercial borrowing is from the international, both are from the international market. But Commercial borrowing, that means the rate which is going on the market for borrowings and external assistance is on the concessional rates. Next is the banking capital. Capital transactions related to foreign exchange transactions and investment in the foreign currency and securities. That is known as banking capital. And next one we have done already commercial bonds. These are very important. So I have, again, I'm saying commercial borrowings from international market and external assistance, concessional borrowings. Is it clear all of you? Again, I am going to the next slide. Let us revise all the components. We have current account. This is the balance of payment, systematic record of all the economic transactions of the resident with the rest of the world in a financial year. It has two components, current account and the capital account. Now the components of current account, visible goods like cars, mobiles, computers, gold, etc., crude oil. Invisible items like services, shipping, insurance, transportation. Then we have income transfers like profit, interest, dividend. And then we have unilateral transfers like donations, gifts, remittance, right? While these visible items are known as balance of trade. That is a net difference between import and export. It is known as balance of trade and it creates the, when import is more and export is less, it creates trade deficit. Now comes the capital account. The second component, we have investments like foreign direct investment, foreign institutional investments. We have loans. We have done already borrowings, right? Commercial borrowings and external assistance. Then we have also Cap banking capital transactions like okay then is it clear all of you then goes to the next slide next is the debit and credit items uh, this time cbs is asking uh, these types of questions that uh, it has been giving the item and they are asking that in which part of and which in which account they are going to be under so i expect that uh, this uh, topic will be clear from this slide I try my best to explain you. Okay, debit and credit items. I will first take the current account. We have export and import. Export always earns, it's the inflow of when we export something, it uh, is an inflow of foreign exchange. So we take it as a positive one, right? And import, when we import something from uh, another rest of the world, we are losing our foreign exchange, right? So if we have taken it as negative one. I'm first covering the current account. So as you have seen, visible goods are there. When we export visible goods, they are entered in the positive side. And we in the import physical goods, we are in, they are entered in the negative side. Of the current account. Similarly, the invisible items like services or incomes. So when we are exporting them, we are entering the positive side and when we are importing them, we are entering the negative side. Then comes the unilateral transfers. That is the single-sided. So when we get the 
unilateral transfer from the rest of the world. When we are getting from the other countries, then it is an inflow for an exchange. So it is in the positive side of current account. And when we give assistance to any another country, you need a single-sided payment. When we give gifts, donation to other countries, then it is the outflow of foreign exchange. So it is entered in the negative side of the unilateral transfer. Okay. Next is capital account. Again, we have export and import. But you can see I have changed the sign here. I have given positive sign on the import and negative sign on the export. Because in capital transfer, capital account, we mainly deal with the lending and borrowings. But when we borrow something, yes, it's a, a future burden on the economy. But when we borrow, the foreign exchange enters in our country. Right, it's the inflow. So that is why I have taken positive. And when we are lending, we are giving some loan to some other countries. So foreign exchange is going out. That is why I have taken negative. I think it is clear to all of you. So let's start. First is import borrowings. Right, so these types of borrowings can be of commercial borrowings, we have done already, or external, it is a positive. And when we give to some other country, it comes to the negative side. So, whenever there is inflow of assets, some assets come in our country, we import, and it's come to the positive side. And when we goes any assets in a, from our country to rest of the world, it's the outflow of, it goes to the negative side. Next is the physical or financial assets, right? When we import, it is on the positive side and when we export of any asset, if koi bhi jai ki bahar, so it is of the negative side. So it is clear of your view. So you just take it care of this, even in the board exams, just make this table, the upper part in the your rough portion of your sheet so that while uh, writing the answer, you will not be confused. So let us summarize this. A BOP account is prepared according to the principle of double book entry. I told you payment and receipts. This accounting procedure give rise to two entries, a debit as well as credit right debit what goes out credit what comes in any transaction give rise to a receipt from the world is credit it can be any inflow of foreign exchange which can it is inflow it is credit and any transaction giving rise to payment to the rest of the world is debit is it clear to all of you it's very important let us go to the next slide. Balance of trade and balance of payments. The difference I have done for you. Balance of trade is a systematic record of the value of visible exports and imports in a country. And BOP is a systematic record of all the economic transactions between resident of a country and rest of the world. So it includes all types of transactions. It may be of unilateral, it may be of invisibles and or visibles. While BOT only includes visible export and import. So balance of trade is a narrow concept and balance of payment is a wider concept. Balance of trade, it, I have written, it's an incomplete or it's a partial record of economic transactions with the rest of the world because it's only taking care of the visible transactions. It is not taking care of the invisible or the unilateral ones. While the BOP is a complete record of economic transactions with the rest of the world, and it shows the complete economic relations of the country with the rest of the world. Or it shows the complete picture of the country, right, in that particular year. 
next one so i just added this uh, uh, picture balance of payment export import it's balancing it and if it is not a uh, balance both are not equal it relates to trade deficit right and balance of payment can be in surplus or it can be in deficit when exports are more it is in surplus yes right and when imports are more they are in deficit next is autonomous and accommodating items of dup autonomous transactions are independent of the state of bop account and not related to established bop identity actually autonomous items are done for the motive of profit earn the motive is profit but accommodating items are not meant for the profit motive the motive is to balance the bop or to remove the deficit or surplus situation created in the bop by autonomous items i am again repeating autonomous items are due to the profit motive or the economic transactions the motive is to earn profit right while accommodating items are done to balance the deficit or surplus created by the autonomous one in the bop so jo bop hai usme jitna bhi imbalance create ho raha hai wo autonomous transactions ki wajah se ho raha hai to use balance kaun karega accommodating items right second one autonomous transaction take place on both current and capital as you have we have run there are two components of bop current account and capital account करंट अकाउंट में भी ट्रांजेक्शन ट्रांजेक्शन होंगी और कैपिटल अकाउंट में भी होंगी व्हाई अकोमोडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन टेक प्लेस ऑन ओनली ऑन कैपिटल अकाउंट क्योंकि हम उसे जो बैलेंस करना होगा जो भी डेफिशिट या सरप्लस सिचुएशन है उसे हम बैलेंस फॉरेन एक्सचेंज से करेंगे और वो कहा से आएगा कैपिटल अकाउंट के थ्रू तो सबसे पहले बीओपी में हम एंटर क्या करते हैं जो ऑटोमेटिकली ट्रांजेक्शन हो रही हैं, प्रॉफिट से हो रही हैं, तो इसलिए उन्हें बोला जाता है अब द लाइन आइटम्स क्योंकि हम फर्स्टली वही एंटर करते हैं इकोनॉमिक मगर इनको एंटर करने के बाद जब वो लास्ट में सरप्लस या डेफिशिट की सिचुएशन आती है तो उसे बैलेंस करने के लिए बोथ साइड को हम जो आइटम्स एड करते हैं उन्हें कहा जाता है अकोमोडेटिंग क्योंकि वो बाद में एड की जाती है इसलिए उन्हें कहा जाता है बिलो द लाइन आइटम्स these items are also known as below the line items okay is it clear all of you next is bop deficit the balance of payment refers to the situation when the total inflow on account of the autonomous transaction is less than the total outflow on account of such transactions right जब इनफ्लो और आउटफ्लो राइट जब इनफ्लो कम होगा ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन का और आउटफ्लो ज्यादा होगा तो क्या हो जाएगा बीओपी डेफिशियन एग्जाम्पल हेयर ऑटोनॉमस आइटम्स आर रिलेटेड टू द इकोनॉमिक ट्रांजेक्शन इन द करेंट अकाउंट एंड कैपिटल अकाउंट दैट इज डन विथ सम इकोनॉमिक मोटिव लाइक प्रॉफिट मैक्सिमाइजेशन वेन it autonomous receipts are less than the autonomous payments they termed as bop deficit for example during the financial year autonomous inflow of foreign exchanges of 500 dollars and the outflow is of 600 dollars a kitna raha hai 500 dollars aur ja kitna raha hai 600 dollars to total deficit kitna hua rupees sorry dollar 100 right so i hope so that it is clear to all of you the next topic is official reserve transactions official reserve transactions are the transactions made by the central bank which cause change in its official reserves of the foreign exchange 
एक्चुअली इतनी देखो ट्रांजेक्शन हो रही है तो उसमें ऑफिशियल रिजर्व अकाउंट में चेंज आएगा फॉर्मेट चेंज का दिस हैपन्स ओनली वेन इकोनॉमी विदड्रॉ फ्रॉम इट स्टॉक टू फाइनेंस डेफिशिट इन ओवरऑल बीओपी फिर बच्चों जब बीओपी में डेफिशिट होता है अभी आपको मैंने बताया ना ऑटोनॉमस ट्रांजेक्शन का इनफ्लो जब कम होगा आउटफ्लो से तो डेफिशिट हो जाएगा उसको बैलेंस करना पड़ेगा तो बैलेंस करने के लिए हम अकोमोडेटिंग आइटम से फॉरेन रिजर्व निकालने पड़ेंगे कैपिटल अकाउंट से कहा से निकालेंगे हम कौन से अकाउंट में जाएंगे हम जाएंगे फॉरेन ऑफिशियल रिजर्व में और वहां से फॉरेन एक्सचेंज को लाकर उसमें दिखाएंगे ताकि वो बीओपी डेफिशिट जितने से हो रहा है वो बैलेंस हो जाए सो कॉजेज ऑफ डिसम हम बार बार डिसम की बात कर रहे हैं तो लेट एस जस्ट आई एम क्विक व्यू दैट डिसम होता किस किस कारण से है नंबर वन इज द इकोनॉमिक फैक्टर्स इम्बैलेंस बिटवीन द एक्सपोर्ट एंड इम्पोर्ट राइट लार्ज स्केल डेवलपमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर विच कॉजेज लार्ज टाइप ऑफ इम्पोर्ट इन दंट्री हाई डोमेस्टिक प्राइजेस राइट विच लीड्स टू इनफ्लेशन ऑल्सो साइक्लिक फ्लक्चुएशन एट ए रिसेशन डिप्रेशन और बूम राइट That is a business activity you all know, and new sources of supply and substitutes. Next is political factors. Experience shows that political instability, change of the government, right, change of the ruler, and disturbances cause large capital outflow, right, and hinders inflow of foreign capital. देखिए जब घर में ही शांति नहीं होगी तो नो वन वॉन्ट्स टू एंटर एज अ गेस्ट इन आर हाउस तो सेम इन विद द कंट्री इफ द कंट्री इज नॉट इन अ पीस सिचुएशन द पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी इज नॉट देयर देयर इज अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटीज इन द कंट्री सो नो अदर कंट्री वॉज इंटरेस्टेड टू इन्वेस्ट इन सच ए अनसेफ कंट्री सो दैट इज पॉलिटिकल फैक्टर नेक्स्ट इज अ सोशल फैक्टर चेंज इन फैशन टेस्ट प्रेफरेंस इज वन ऑफ द कॉज the people start importing more of the goods to change in the preference or taste high population growth also in poor countries right is because it increases the need of the country for import and decreases the capacity to export to better jab population hi zyada hogi to jo produce goods hai wo sufficient nahi honge as a result we have we are not capable to export the items to other countries why to fulfill the needs of the population of a large population of the country we have to import the goods so our topic is over of balance of payment if you have any doubt you can we put that doubts in your chat box i try my best to solve them next is the foreign exchange market the market in which national currencies national currencies of various countries are converted or exchanged or traded for one another is called foreign exchange market right so what is foreign exchange it's a foreign exchange kya cheez hai bachcho foreign exchange is the currency of rest of the world right so the market ek aise market jahan par करेंसीज जो हैं वो एक्सचेंज होती हैं कन्वर्ट होती हैं ट्रेड होती हैं और वन अनदर इज कॉल्ड फॉरेन एक्सचेंज मार्केट इट इज नॉट इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस हेयर इट इज नॉट एनी फिजिकल प्लेस लाइक द मार्केट वी हैव इन आर लोकेलिटीज ऑफ क्लो शूज एक्सेट्रा बट इज अ नेटवर्क ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम विच connects the whole complex of institutions it includes kya kya aata hai kaun inko control karta hai banks specialized foreign exchange dealers brokers and official government agencies through which the currency of one country can be exchanged for that of another country again foreign exchange market is of two types spot market and forward market spot market is a daily nature 
it deals only in spot transactions of foreign exchange the exchange rate that prevails in the spot market is called spot exchange rate while forward market jo hoti hai the forward market in which foreign exchange is brought and sold on a specific future date at a rate agreed upon today humne rate aaj hi decide kar liya right aur some future ko us rate pe ek particular date pe jo humne already decide kar rakhi hai us par hum trade karenge is called forward market the exchange rate that prevails in the forward market is called forward exchange rate the rate at which currency of one country can be exchanged for currency of another country is called rate of foreign exchange for instance for example one american dollar can be obtained for 50 indian rupees then foreign exchange rate will be 1 dollar is equals to 50 rupees iska matlab hame 1 dollar lene ke liye kitne rupees ka sacrifice karna hoga 50 rupees ka so which has the more value purchasing power rupee or the dollar it has a dollar because 1 dollar has a capability to purchase goods or services of valued of rupees 50 this 50 to 1 dollar will be called foreign exchange rate between usa and india next is the functions foreign exchange market performs three main functions transfer functions credit function and hedging function transfer function refers to transferring purchasing power between the country when we transfer the purchasing power right that is foreign transfer function next is a credit function refers to providing credit credit means to make the payment in future for foreign trade right and hedging function pertains to protect against foreign exchange risk hedging is an activity which is designed to minimize risk of losses types of exchange rate fixed exchange rate which is officially fixed by the government or monetary authority and not determined by the market forces in our country who is the monetary authority it's the rbi next is the floating exchange rate rate which is determined by the forces of supply and demand in the foreign exchange market to so, jo forces ke dwara hai demand aur supply ke wo floating hai aur flexible hai ise flexible bhi bolte hain bachcho aur fixed kon hai jo government ke through hai next is managed floating it is a combination of fixed and flexible maine bataya na floating aur flexible flexible bhi kahin kahin bola jata hai to so, fixed in dono ka jo combination hai इन दोनों का जो कॉम्बिनेशन है वो मैनेज फ्लोटिंग आता है एंड अंडर दिस कंट्री मैनुपुलेट द एक्सचेंज रेट टू एडजस्ट द डेफिशिट इन द बीओपी राइट बाय द फॉलोइंग सर्टेन गाइडलाइंस बाय इंटरनेशनल मॉनेटरी फंड तो मैनेज फ्लोटिंग रेट जो फिक्स्ड और फ्लेक्सिबल का कॉम्बिनेशन है इसमें गवर्नमेंट जो है अपने बीओपी डेफिशिट को बैलेंस करने के लिए काम कर सकती है अपने एक्सचेंज रेट को रीवेलुएट कर सकती है बट अंडर द गाइडलाइंस ऑफ इंटरनेशनल मॉनेटरी फंड बट इफ द सेम एक्टिविटी मैनेज फ्लोटिंग इफ द सेम एक्टिविटी मैनेज फ्लोटिंग इज डन विदाउट और अगेंस्ट द गाइडलाइंस ऑफ इंटरनेशनल मॉनेटरी फंड्स देन इट बिकम्स डर्टी right because they are not following the rules they are not in favor of the uh, international monetary fund guidelines so that becomes dirty floating if the country manipulates the exchange rate without following the guidelines issued by the imf is called dirty floating demand 
फॉर एंड सप्लाई ऑफ फॉरन एक्सचेंज बच्चो डिमांड कब कब होगी हमारा फॉरन एक्सचेंज फॉरन एक्सचेंज मैंने आपको बताया इट्स द करेंसी ऑफ रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑफ एनी कंट्री सो हमें उसकी डिमांड कब कब होगी हमें कब कब चाहिए हमें यही सोचना है जब डिमांड का क्वेश्चन आएगा तो नंबर वन इज टू परचेज गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस फ्रॉम अदर कंट्रीज जब भी हमें किसी दूसरी कंट्री से गुड्स और सर्विसेज लेने हैं तो हम हमें पैसे चाहिए उन, उनकी करेंसी चाहिए तभी हम उनकी कंट्री से ले सकते हैं तो सेंड गिफ्ट अब्रॉड ठीक है अब हमें फाइनेंशियल गिफ्ट देंगे तो हमें उनकी करेंसी में लेने पड़ेंगे टू परचेज फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स शेयर्स और बॉन्ड्स अगर हमें किसी और कंट्री के शेयर्स और बॉन्ड में इन्वेस्ट करना है तो हमें उनकी एक फॉरन एक्सचेंज चाहिए टू स्पेकुलेट ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ फॉरन करेंसी अगर हमें ट्रेड करना है फॉरन एक्सचेंज में तब भी हमें फॉरन करेंसी चाहिए टू अंडरटेक फॉरन टू अगर हमें बाहर घूमने जाना है तो वो इंडियन रुपये तो चलेगा नहीं तो क्या चाहिए हमें विदेश की करेंसी तो इन्वेस्ट डायरेक्टली इन शॉप्स फैक्ट्री वहीं पे हम इन्वेस्ट फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट करना चाहते हैं इंडस्ट्री लगाना चाहते हैं तो व्हाट वी नीड गेन फॉरन एक्सचेंज ऑफ दैट कंट्री टू मेक पेमेंट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड और जितने भी इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड होते हैं वो तो किसमें होते हैं फॉरन एक्सचेंज तो इसी का उल्टा हमने सप्लाई में करना है कि हमारे पास फॉरन एक्सचेंज कब कब आएगा Foreign currency inflow in the domestic economy due to the following reasons: when foreigners purchase home country goods and services through export, जब बाहर के लोग हमारे यहाँ से purchase करेंगे और क्या purchase करेंगे? When जब हम export करेंगे, when foreign investor invest in bonds and equity shares of the home country, जब बाहर के लोग foreigners rest of the world हमारे शेयर्स बॉन्ड इक्विटी में इन्वेस्ट करेगा फॉरेन करेंसी इनफ्लो इन टू इट ड्यू टू डीलर्स एंड स्पेकुलेटर्स राइट व्हेन फॉरेन टूरिस्ट कम टू इंडिया व्हेन इंडियन वर्कर्स वर्किंग अब्रॉड सेंड देयर सेविंग टू फैमिलीज इन इंडिया अप्रिसिएशन एंड डेप्रिसिएशन ऑफ डोमेस्टिक Before I go to this topic, I want to tell you one more topic that is devaluation and depreciation. Sometimes the one mark question is there in the CBSC. In devaluation and depreciation, the value of the domestic currency is decreased as compared to other country. Both, but. in devaluation the decrease is done intentionally by the government government khud apni currency ki value ko decrease kar deti hai jabki depreciation mein market forces that is demand and supply forces ke karan currency ki value decrease hoti hai to meri baat mujhe lag raha hai aapko samajh aa rahi hai कि डिवेल्युएशन इज डन बाय द गवर्नमेंट इंटेंशनली द रीजन मे बी मेनी लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल टू डिस्करेज इंपोर्ट इंपोर्ट टू इंकरेज एक्सपोर्ट जब सस्ता होगा तो एक्सपोर्ट ज्यादा होगा एंड डेप्रिसिएशन इज डन बाय द मार्केट फोर्सेस डिमांड एंड सप्लाई in both the value is decreased in of the domestic currency so let's come to our topic again so depreciation and appreciation it depreciation it refers to a decrease in the value of the domestic currency in terms of foreign currency it refers to the increase in the value jab increase hogi to appreciation hoga decrease hoga to depreciation hoga it makes domestic goods cheaper in foreign exchange country right and it makes foreign goods cheap right depreciation makes cheaper and foreign goods currency right 
it leads to increase in import a change from us dollar rupees 50 for example rate kya chal raha hai 1 dollar kitne ke barabar hai 50 ke ab 1 dollar agar 55 ka ho gaya hai so it's a depreciation dekhiye bachcho pehle hame 1 dollar ke liye kitne rupees dene padte the 50 ab kitne dene pad rahe hain तो डिवैल्यूएशन किसका हो रहा है रुपी का डेप्रिसिएशन हो और ये किसके कारण हो रहा है मार्केट फोर्सेस सेम इज एप्रिसिएशन अगर पहले 1 डॉलर 50 के था अब वो 1 डॉलर कितना हो गया 45 दिस 45 राइट तो 45 हो गया देन इट इज एप्रिसिएशन पहले जहां हमें 50 रुपए में 1 डॉलर मिलता था अब कितने गुड्स में मिलेगा 45 सो इट इज एन एप्रिसिएशन equilibrium in the foreign exchange market the equilibrium exchange rate is determined at the point where demand for and supply of foreign exchange are equal you can see in the diagram demand for and supply for are equal so this is the point of equilibrium it is a point of equilibrium so equilibrium rate of exchanges o r and the quantity is o q graphically interaction of demand and supply determines the equilibrium exchange rate of the foreign currency you can see that demand and supply intersect at the point e is the point of equilibrium and these r is the equilibrium exchange rate and o q is the quantity now if the exchange rate is o r 1 so this is the exchange rate then you can see here at o r 1 what is the demand o n and what is the supply o n so supply is more than demand so this create excess supply and when there is excess supply it again creates on pressure on the exchange rate to decrease till o r if exchange rate is o r 2 see this demand is o n and supply is o n supply is o n and demand is o n so it is a situation of excess demand so when there is excess demand what will happen again it's a pressure the exchange rate will rise it rise up till o r the equilibrium exchange rate i hope it is clear to all of you Thank you students for patiently listening me. If you again have any doubt, you can still uh, ask me in the, in the comment section. I try my best to explain you the topic. This is very important topic. You can view the slides and you can ask your queries in the comment section. Thank you so much.